What is up guys, Sean here. And I wanna do a video basically about carbon steel versus stainless steel. It's kind of a huge subject and I'm trying to keep it very, very simple and very, very short and concise in this video. So bear with me. There won't be any cutting or tests or anything like that. But often I run into folks and they tell me, you know, Oh, dude, you gotta get a carbon steel, man. You know, it just cuts longer, you know, holds an edge longer, you know, all this and that. And yes and no. So the carbon content, carbon cuts, that's the old saying. The thing is, is that most stainless, high quality stainless knives actually have more carbon than 1095 steel. What? Yeah, yeah, believe it or not. This. 1095 Crovan has anywhere between uh, 0.93 and 1.03 carbon percentage and this VG1 right here has uh, what is it 0.95 to 1.05 carbon content so maybe just a trace amount more but we also have some more alloying packed in here with the chromium a tad of nickel etc so now that we got that out of the way that actually Stainless steels can actually have more carbon than carbon steels. And for example, so these aren't actually survival knives that I'm about to show you, but this is probably the highest carbon content in any knife steel, and da -da -da -da, it's stainless. It's ZDP 189 with a carbon content of 3%. That's right, three times the amount of carbon in your old carbon steel. How does that make sense, right? It's stainless because it does have 20% chromium, which I believe 12.5% is the, uh, that's about the cutoff point is 12% chromium. In actuality, what really makes a stainless knife is it having enough free chromium. So ZDP 189, on paper, it should be a super stainless, right? Because it has 20% wrong. The 3% carbon sucks up most of that chromium into hard packets called carbides which help the knife cut longer wear better and so you don't really have a terrible amount of free chromium to resist the rust I've got a little bit of uh, a rusting there I live in a pretty uh, humid environment and so you don't quite have enough freed up to resist the uh, the rust formation on there interesting so what is the highest carbon steel out there well this isn't quite it this is white number two shiragami two but in Japan they have something called uh, white steel number one which is about pushing one and a half percent carbon and that's about the highest carbon you can get in a, just a regular carbon steel blade and it's not it's not made here in the USA boys in fact, both of these knives are Japanese steels. So the Japanese steels, they basically, they beat out the US steels when it comes to high carbon content. And maybe in the future we'll talk more about Japanese steels versus uh, US steels, but we'll save that for another video. But yeah, this is white steel number two, I believe it's pushing like 1.3% uh, carbon. Still a very, very high carbon and it does make it a little bit more difficult to heat treat to get it to fully harden with all that carbon in there since there's only so much that can be soaked up in the blade but we'll, we'll talk about that stuff later too for now let's talk about mostly for the survival knives here so we got the 1095 Crovan and the VG1 here in a nutshell guys you're gonna get more wear resistance in the VG1 stainless than a 1095 and there's a few reasons why that is this steel will basically outcut and outperform the 1095 I said it breaks my heart to say right we all love the carbon steel and, and this and that because of the, uh, the the toughness involved but this steel is tough not be for for a few reasons one reason is because it's under hardened that's right it's not at the optimal hardness for performance guys it's basically down at 56, 57, which isn't super hard. This guy over here is like basically, what is that, 58, 59 HRC. And so what that means is with the hardness, strength and toughness are inverse relationships, okay? What that means is the harder the blade is, the more likely 
your apex is going to hold its shape through cutting stuff as well as impacting into things, okay? It's more likely to hold its shape. The toughness is kind of how malleable the edge is. It won't chip out, but it'll just kind of move. The steel will move, and then it can be moved back. That's, that's kind of how I'm interpreting knife steel toughness. So I believe the actual interpretation of that, if I get an engineer or something on here, he's gonna, he's gonna tear me apart. But with the toughness on this steel right here, how it performs when you hit something hard or if you, if you do stuff with it and you're using it up, it tends to blunt more, it tends to roll out of the way more, which in my opinion, mm, I don't like that too much. I want something that holds its shape better. And when you get up in, in hardness with a steel like this, you're gonna hold your shape more. The problem with that, why people hate the harder steels, it seems, for survival blades, is mostly because of user error. That's right, user error. People aren't using these knives the way they should, so when they have an insanely sharp uh, blade or whatnot, they're doing stuff like hitting the ground or cutting stuff they shouldn't, etc. And what happens is they wouldn't even be able to use the high performance steel. They wouldn't even be able to enjoy it because it, to them it would just be chipping all the time. And they, they would not like that at all. Versus if they had something like this, it would just be rolling and blunting. But as long as they don't see any chips, it's good to go, right? Well, you know, those, those rolls and blunting is gonna make it not cut very well either. So yeah, it is what it is. It really comes down to how a user uses their knife. But let's move on from there. So in a nutshell, carbon steel will sharpen better than stainless steel, even if these two knives were at the same hardness. Why is that? Well, the matrix itself in the steel is actually much simpler. And for whatever reason, I don't, I don't completely understand it either, but for whatever reason, when sharpening these knives, this knife, the burr removes with incredible ease compared to something on this right here. The burrs seem to be more stubborn on stainless steel knives for whatever given reason than on the carbon steel knives where they almost just seem to flake off on the first few passes when trying to remove the burr. And forgive me guys if you don't know what a burr is, but when you're basically sharpening a knife, you sharpen one side until a burr forms, you sharpen the other side until a burr forms, and then you know your apex is true, okay? Burr, burr, remove the burr, edge. All right, so that's simpler to do on a 1095 steel versus here on the VG1 or any stainless for that matter. It seems to take much longer to remove that burr. Uh, there's a huge fallacy about Oh, you get more sparks off the carbon steel or whatnot, and I just can't stand it. It doesn't. It doesn't make any bit of a difference which knife makes the you know the most sparks or whatnot. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> they both. They both make sparks. This is probably the worst ferro rod I have. And you see, this is a stainless knife, and it made the sparks. It's not going to work on this BK2 because the spine doesn't come sharp and it's coated. This is still coated, but the spine is still sharp. But you just saw that I used probably the worst ferrous aluminum rod in the world on this stainless knife and it made a ton of sparks. So it doesn't matter. It's just a sharp edge. Ferrous is a pyrophoric metal. You just scrape off that blend of metal. That blend of metal reacts with the, uh, the ambient oxygen in the atmosphere and makes the sparks. People are thinking of like, uh, like pioneer days where you would sit there and you had a striker and a rock, a rock that's harder than the steel itself, and you would get like freaking five sparks, and if your tender was wet or if you had horrible tender, you were gonna die. <laughs> you really needed like a charred tender or some sort of plant fungus to, to get that going, as well as an insane amount of practice, which, yeah, I, what I'm trying to say is don't buy a carbon steel knife just because you think it's gonna make your firecraft game step up. It doesn't work like that. That's probably the worst reason to buy a, a knife, thinking that, you know, you're getting, or that's the worst reason to choose carbon over stainless is what I mean, because you're thinking you're gonna be more versatile with your firecraft. If you're not practicing that stuff, you're not even gonna use that, that feature anyway, so.
yeah. Don't don't let that be the reason why you choose. So, yeah, in a nutshell, this is easier to sharpen. This basically uh, performs better with cutting or whatnot. As far as which one will hold its edge better, that depends on how you guys use the knife. If you're just bumbling all over the place and hitting the ground and all kinds of stuff, you're going to feel like this has better edge holding than this guy right here. Uh, if you're an expert with your blade and you like stuff insanely sharp, you're going to be like, wow, this seems to hold its shape better. This seems to just blunt from cutting and, and hitting stuff. I mean, it does sharpen and touch up very quick, but you're like, hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have the same amount of edge holding. That's why edge holding is kind of all over the place. But wear resistance is not. This has more packets of carbides in there from the, the chromium, uh, basically allowing it to cut for longer than the, the simpler steel matrix of the 1095. So, yeah, that about wraps it up. Which one to choose really depends on how you use the knife. That's all there is to it. I prefer... Uh, the stainless unless 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 we could get a nice steel out of something like this a survival blade out of some white steel or or even just 1095 that's been hardened like a beast then I would probably prefer the uh, the carbon because then I'm getting ease of sharpening with incredible edge holding and yeah that'd probably be my favorite alright guys thanks for watching take care